Did you know that financial intimacy can lead to better sexual intimacy with your significant other? Money is never just about dollars and cents. Money is wrapped up with emotions such as fear, insecurity, envy, and guilt, and attitudes such as control. So want to improve your financial intimacy? Grab our free guide at www.foundersconnect.co forward slash financial intimacy today. Welcome to Founders Connect Podcast. We help lifestyle entrepreneurs to grow their business online and create a happier marriage. Did you know that approximately 45% of marriages end up in divorce and 65% of all startups fail due to founder conflicts? Well, we're here to change that. Each week, we bring you an inspiring guest and practical tips to help you with business, relationships, and sustainable living. Now, let Let the the fun begin. begin! Welcome to Founders Connect Podcast. I'm Cindy Pham. And I'm Anthony Chansomuth. So what do you do when you're struggling with paying yourself from your business, Anthony? You you get married to a rich wife. Uh, Other than that. (laughs) All right. Well, let's share a story here because this was exactly the problem that we had early on in our marriage when... I was running a business and for the first year of the business, we were still dating when I started the business and we got engaged. So I left my full-time job because it was seriously stressing me out and Cindy saw how that was affecting my mental state as well as our relationship. And I'm really grateful that Cindy basically said to me, look, you don't need the stress. No amount of money is worth the stress and your health going down the drain. And so that was wonderful advice from my love and I ended up leaving that role and then essentially the day after I left my job um, I ended up starting a new or I started freelancing for a while and then that turned into a full-blown business content writing service called Simple Creative Marketing and one of the things that I didn't know at the beginning which now I learned the hard way was the first year of running that business I did not pay myself a salary, right? And that caused all kinds of problems because when you have a wedding to pay for and then you want to make your partner happy and you want to go on fun dates and you want to you know, save money for the future, that doesn't really work when you're not making any money, okay? The business was making money, right? So what I learned, uh, and this is a, a common teaching in the business or startup world is to pay whatever money you make, reinvest that into the business, okay? To keep the business going and and allowing it to grow, right? Which sounds like smart advice. The problem with that is if the founder or the owners of the business aren't getting a salary from it and replacing the income that they would have had from their job, okay? Then they, in their personal world, are falling apart because you can't pay your rent, you can't buy your groceries, you can't support your partner, future wife to be, and whatnot, and that just creates a ton of stress. All right. So, the way we handled this, how do we attack tackle this problem, Cindy? So we explore, we research, and we found a method from Mike. Can you elaborate more, my dad? <laughs> So, so Cindy was great at helping us uh, implement a personal finance system, which we talked about in episode number two. Go and listen to that if you haven't already. Really important. And then we were looking for a similar system for business. Okay. And luckily, I'd listened to a, a couple of podcasts where this guy by the name of Mike Michalowicz uh, spoke on there and he shared his book and his system called Profit First. All right. So um, the way it works is I'm going to share my screen. Now, if you're listening on iTunes, you won't see the screen, but uh, that's okay because this is also got up on, on our YouTube channel. You can then, you'll be able to see what we're talking about. We're going to run you through how it works. And even if you don't see the screen, that's okay because we'll include screenshots of this on our website for this, the show notes for this episode. But essentially, the key, I guess, uh, mindset shift that needs to happen here is how we view profit, okay? And that's the first thing that I had to go through as the business owner to really understand what was going wrong and why I wasn't getting a salary from the business, okay? 
You are listening to the Founders Connect podcast, helping lifestyle entrepreneurs to grow their business online and create a happier marriage. Now back to the show. Now, most of us would know or are taught in business school, if you've gone to business school, that accounting. you're accounting, right? This formula, which is sales minus expenses equals profit, okay? So down here, if you're on, on the screen and you're watching with us, right, it's this formula here. And essentially what that's saying is that you start with how much money your business is earning, your sales for the month, you subtract your expenses. So the costs that are required to keep the business running. So that could be your employee wages, or if you've got contractors, your contractor staff, if you've got apps and tools and licenses, if you've got product inventory or whatever that might be, they're all your expenses. So you'd subtract your expenses from your sales and that leaves you with your profit. Okay. Now from your profit is where you are meant to pull out your salary. Okay. As the owner, the issue with that is what I was finding is that once I subtracted my expenses, that really left nothing, you know, and in many cases it was actually a negative, right. uh, <laughs> which Cindy loved. Uh, oh. <laughs> so that caused a lot of problems, right? So we were running on what's called the red or essentially 12 months before I worked with my mentor at the time, Paul Higgins, shout out to Paul. And he basically helped me reevaluate how to look at my finances for the business. At the same time, I came upon this profit first concept. Now, the new way of viewing this, and this is what Mike teaches is, okay, you start with this formula for success, which is sales minus your profit. Okay. So you take your profit out first, which is why it's called profit first. Okay. And then whatever left over, right, you find a way to pay your expenses. Okay. Now, if your expenses are too high, guess what you end up doing? You end up cutting those expenses. Okay. And you really start to evaluate what are the things that are essential for your business to spend on. And then everything else, you either, you know, get rid of it. Or you essentially have to do a justify why you keep it, which is what I do now with Cindy before I buy anything like new apps and tools, which I'm notorious for. Um, yeah. <laughs> I would run it I by. To, like, what is this for? Every how many days? Yeah. So then you have to really evaluate things before you purchase. And then if you've got apps and tools that are running, you really have to ask yourself, well, do I really need this or can I buy a cheaper option or alternative for that tool? Right. So a good example of that is when we started, we were using a, a tool called Podio as the uh, project management system. And that was costing us per user per month. And then we found another tool, which was Asana, which was much cheaper to switch over to, which we did. And now we found another tool called ClickUp, which is what we're using now, which is actually free, uh, <laughs> which is great. Uh, and it's, you know, there you, go. there you go. Right. So now let's talk about Cindy. Can you talk, run us through the different allocations? Okay, so profit first is is a couple of things. First of all, it is the formula which we just shared, but it's also beyond that. It's actually a system of allocation of exactly. your funds. So, mm-hmm. so this spreadsheet that we're looking at, what does it mean? So basically, I created this spreadsheet on the basis of the profit first idea. So there's also an allocation there. So the first column, which is the blue one, called income. That is all the income, which is also the sales, right? So that's all the amount there. And the second column is the profit, which is in green. And that is the percentage up here is what we use and we can tweak accordingly. But I think from memory, this is the kind of average standard that um, – Mike has suggested. So usually in your first one or two years, mm-hmm. you can start with a profit of 5% to 10%. And then the goal is to increase that percentage over time, right? Yep. As you're making more sales. Yeah. So basically, I just put a formula in. It automatically calculates the percentage. And all you need to do in this spreadsheet is to put the income amount in and everything will formulate, basically. So do you want to explain the other categories? What do they mean? The owner salary is basically the well salary that you pay yourself and the taxes is uh, well everybody t- pay tax so you just allocate amount there the expenses is the what's left over kind of thing and 30 percent was what what's was left over out of that so yeah we use that to pay all our expenses for sm 
Okay, so you can see here the expense value changes over time based on the income amount coming in at the beginning for each month. And you can see here that as the income is increasing, these are real figures, by the way, from Simple Credit Marketing in 2017, sort of early 2018. You can see as the, the income number the value increases, the more sales we were generating, what we could spend the money on in terms of expenses increases, but also our profit and our owner salary and tax amount increases because of the ratios, right? That's critical here. So, but that did not mean that we went out and then went from $600 of expenses and looked no. for things to buy so we could spend now you know, $1,600 on expenses. Oh, that, that just meant that's what was available in the bucket to allocate, all right? And that could mean if we hired more staff or more, in our case, more writers because we had more clients to serve, right? So it naturally worked out that way. But the key here is when we look at our bank accounts, so we've got a business account and a personal account, which we talked about in the last two episodes, you can see how how these were allocated. Now, what's the difference between profit and owner salary? Alrighty, to celebrate the launch of this podcast, we're running an iTunes and Stitcher contest leading up to the first 10 episodes of our show. One lucky winner is going to get an invite to become a founding member of our Founders Connect Inner Circle Mastermind Group, which is normally worth 840 USD per year to join. We're also going to give one lucky winner a 30-minute marketing blast of consulting call with myself or a 30-minute ideal relationship coaching call with Cindy. We normally charge $500 per session, so definitely worth it. You can also win user licenses to a couple of our favorite online marketing tools thanks to our awesome contest partners. We will announce the winners on episode 11, so if you'd like to become a founding member of our Founders Connect Inner Circle or get some marketing or relationship coaching, head on over to foundersconnect.co forward slash win to enter now. You are listening to the Founders Connect podcast, helping lifestyle entrepreneurs to grow their business online and create a happier marriage. Now back to the show. Owner salary is basically an amount of money that the owner actually take out. And profit is basically can sit in the business or it can be just allocated to whatever you want to do with the business. Yeah. So another way that Mike explains in his book is profit. It stays in the business, like Cindy said, and it also is essentially your reward for owning the business. Right. So that can be allocated in any way. For us, we use it to fund a training workshop we did in the Philippines with our VA at the time. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, so you can do things like that team building exercise yeah. or a day off, a paid day off for everyone in the team. Like you can, there's different ways you can invest that. Yeah. Right. And it also is the saving for a rainy day bucket as well. In case something happens, you know, you lose your VA uh, and then you go, okay, well, how do we resolve or lose a writer in our case? And then how do you deal with that? Okay. Yeah. Now, Let's talk about how do you go from this allocation to the next stage, all right? So this is like allocating within the business account. Yeah, so within the business, you also have those different accounts, the profit, the tax, the expenses. Yeah, so there are sub-accounts. Yeah, so they're all sub-accounts. Okay. And so here's basically what the sub-accounts are. Okay. The a, B, and C. We named account A as SCM Profit. And B, living. The living actually goes to our personal, personal account, um, which is also broken down here to the percentage and the actual accounts that we actually made up for ourselves. And that's based on the TF Eka bucket system, which we talked about in episode one. Yeah, but I also added the Cindy and Amp account because that's just our own spending that we can do whatever we want. So... Just to repeat what that's used for, basically what you're saying is that 3% that goes to Cindy, 3% that goes to Anth, that's basically discretionary fund money that we can use for whatever yeah, we want to use individual. as, as individuals. Yeah, okay. as individual, you can use whatever so, and no question asked kind of thing. Yeah, which is a really healthy habit to have. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I want to just sort of come back to the bank account things because just to clarify what why does it A, B, and C. So essentially one of the suggestions that Mike makes in his book is that you should keep your profit in, a, in one bank business bank account or business sub account, and then your owner salary and your tax allocations okay. need to be in different banks, right? Not only in different accounts, but they need to be sitting in different banks to remove the temptation, temptation to go and pull that money out and use it, right? Which I remember when I first started business, everything was running through my personal bank account. 
and so you get really confused. And when it's tax time, it's a mess to try and work out, you know, what's personal, what's business, right? So that, that's what it's all about. So that's basically to recap profit first. How it works is you're starting with a formula, sales minus profit equals expenses. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're taking your profit out first. You're taking your owner's salary out out and allocating that and you send your owner's salary to your personal account and then within that you can allocate that however way you want we're using the bucket system and then what's left over is your expenses uh, allocation and then you got to work out okay well what are the things that need to be paid right now like for us we have got to pay our writers because they need to be paid but then things like apps and tools it's okay if some of those things don't get paid because what happens is like it just rolls over to the following month so you well then you're faced with this decision do i keep the app or tool or do i actually get more clients so i can pay for Boy. those next month yeah mm-hmm. and then you've got your allocation system within your business. So you've got income, profit, owner salary, tax and expenses. Mm -hmm. We've shared our percentage values. They're based off the uh, allocation numbers that Mike suggests, but we did tweak them for our own situation. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is working for us and and you got to work out what works for you. Okay. Because you might want to take a greater owner salary or less, you know, if you've got more funding. 90%. (laughs) There you go. The tax one is really based off our, I think that's really just looking at Per country, really. Yeah, our country yeah. tax taxation percentage. And this kind of equates to if we were working in our normal, like a nine to five job as well, because you would normally have that tax amount pulled out, out of your income, right? So that's it. Any last words on Profit First, Cindy? Well, I think it's a great idea and it's a new concept. So it's hard for some traditional accounting personnel to just um, put their mind to it. So um, if you have a go with it, you understand why this is important and your mindset about money will change as well because the the concept of it is basically you first. Yep. And why would you want to be running a business that's eating up a lot of your time and energy and not having the reward from that? So not being able to, you know, fund your lifestyle, which is really what we're all about uh, why we were creating founders connect a big part of this is improving your relationship and your financial intimacy which we yes. talked about and if you're not dealing with money management really well in your business and in your personal life mm-hmm. that's going to have a huge strain on your relationship and your marriage so yeah, yeah. Uh, all right so if you have any questions on this please throw those in the comments hit us up on instagram or facebook and well website or our website oh one thing we have for you, we're going to actually share this spreadsheet with you. Yeah. We're going to remove all the numbers because it's not relevant to you. We might just give one line, an example, but then you can use this to essentially implement the profit first system for your business. All right. We'll share this along with our guide to financial uh, intimacy, which has a whole bunch of questions and things answered in there, which will help you really look at how to develop that financial intimacy within your relationship with your spouse. So what is the the website? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so it's foundersconnect.co forward slash podcast. You can go there and get the show notes for this episode. And in there, we'll put a link to the financial guide. If you want to go straight to the financial guide, it's proper, uh, <laughs> it's founders, <laughs> foundersconnect.co forward slash financial intimacy. In our next episode, we'll discuss how building a community can supercharge your business with the incredible Tara Back. Mullen, formerly known as Tara Gentili. And remember to live passionately, purposefully, and confidently. Till next time, 